What's up guys, Sarah and Benzer, I'm here for another video, and today we are going to be working on the reverse daily heba for no gi, so stick with us and stay tuned. Os. So today I'm here with my wife Bruna and we're going to be giving you guys a little bit of a roadmap on how to utilize the reverse de la Hiva, pardon me, in an no-gi situation. I've made some videos in the gi on, no, uh, on reverse de la Hiva, but things change a little bit, but if I'm being quite honest, most of the stuff on that gi video is going to translate to no-gi as well. But for the sake of demonstration, for the sake of all the viewers asking, I wanted to make it specifically for no-gi. So, it's not going to be so much on specified technique today. You guys know the way I teach. I'm going to just be laying out some of the thoughts and some of the concepts and principles that I try to follow while playing reverse de la Hiva without a gi. So I'll stop talking without further ado. Let's do it. So what, why is the reverse de la Hiva so powerful in no gi? Primarily it's because it prevents the knee cut, right? The knee cut's one of the most dynamic and <clears throat> pardon me, powerful passes, especially without the gi. So if I'm here trying to play guard and Bruno just cuts right through, she's gonna pass my guard, right? Especially if I'm in some type of half guard situation and she starts to stand up and knee cut, right? So I need to know how to prevent that. So in order to prevent that, the reverse de la Hiva became popular because as she goes to knee cut, go knee cut, if I can catch here, I'm gonna prevent it most of the time, so squat, right? So one thing to note, when I teach reverse de la Hiva and people drill it, one of the most common issues is actually with the practice partner. And I'm not saying anything against my wife, she's doing a great job and before we film techniques we always talk about it. But I do want to mention it to you guys because when you're a practice partner with reverse de la Hiva, you have to be in a realistic squatted position, almost like a split squat or a knee cut or a position where you're trying to pass. Because if the person stands straight up, it's almost impossible for me to put the hook in. It's, it's almost impossible. And if the person sits straight up, you have a couple options. So let's address it. If they're sitting straight up and they're disengaging, you can just sit up. Right? I can just sit up and start to attack the single leg. Right? If they're just sitting up, I can just switch my hips and I can go for the De La Hiva. I can go back here. I can switch to the back. There's a bunch of different things you can do because at that point, your opponent's no longer trying to engage with you. On the contrary, they're trying to disengage. But for the purpose of practicing, the person's going to have to be squatted and in like a knee cut. So now that we're here, she tried to knee cut or she squatted. She's in some type of split squat position. I get this hook in, right? Let's turn this way. So I get this hook in and I want you guys to know the positioning of your body. I'm on one shoulder, so I'm never flat in reverse de la Hiva. I'm on one shoulder. My hook is on the inside of her leg. If her knee is even more turned in, it makes the hook even more powerful right? And I'm hooking the top of her quad with my right leg, okay? Now, what does my hand do? In this case, since my right leg is the one hooking, my right hand is going to control the same leg as the reverse de la Hiva hook. So, for example, we're controlling Bruna's right leg, so my right hand is going to follow up and add a second form of control by controlling her heel, or I can come with my preferred method of gripping, and I can do a palm up, underhook this way, or overhook, right? Where, if you guys can see without it, I almost am like flexing my bicep. I always tell my students, just pretend you're flexing your bicep and you want her ankle in the crook of your elbow. So again, try knee cut a little. Try, yeah. So again, she's trying to knee cut a little bit. I'm here, I get this good grip, and now my, my secondary leg is going to be keeping her weight off. So try to get close and crowd me and get head control. Right, I wanna keep her weight off with my foot and hand. See how I'm doing this? Try to get close. I keep her, I keep her weight off of me. And as she tries to crowd me, that opens the opportunity for me to start using my hand and foot to swim underneath Bruna and then get behind her. Let's move back. That's going to be the primary method of attack, in my opinion, from the reverse de la Hiva. This is, this is my system. This is the things that I'm always looking for. 
Same with the gi. I'm waiting for the person to try to put the pressure into me so that I can follow up and use that momentum to shove them and go underneath them. At which point you have a bunch of options. You're gonna have leg drag, leg drag options, back take options, takedown options, 50-50 options, saddle options, reverse X options, so many different options. And I'm not gonna be able to go over all those in the video, but I can demonstrate a few. So again, we're here, Bruna's standing, right? She's attempting the knee cut, and I'm able to get this control. Now she's squatting, she's trying to pressure into me. Look guys, slow down just a bit. Look, I need this foot, my left foot can either reinforce my right by pushing up on it, but I prefer to put the ball of my toes on the outside of her hip. Something to look out for with this left leg is the esteema lock, the toe hold, and the knee bar when she steps around to try to attack my leg. My left hand's gonna be framing inside of my knee, like so, and now she starts to crowd, and I just keep her off. I'm just pushing her off the whole time. Right? And at this point, it allows me to switch my right hand grip, go underneath her armpit, and start coming up behind Bruna. Okay, so my first option here, depending on what my opponent does, is I can start to extend them forward and attack a body lock position, like a rear body lock. So I can start to extend, come here, and then switch to the seat belt and start to attack the back. Just stand straight up in front of me. So if she just stands straight up in front of me, like facing away as if I was already behind her exactly and, I, and sh I'm not able to bring her over me because remember with the gi we can grab the belt so we lose a little bit of upper body control yes you can try to grab the waist but if you give up on controlling at least one of the legs and I grab the waist just step out she can just step out so come back so rather than try to grab the waist I can grab the ankles I can use pressure on my shins to push her forward so she's going to be posting on her hands as she falls forward Exactly, and I can start to climb my way into a back take. That's a more common way of attacking versus in the gi when we grab the belt and we pull them onto us. No gi, I oftentimes go straight to knocking them over and jumping the body lock because we create the scramble. So again, when I go underneath, just stand straight up. So we're here, she's pressuring into us, right? Pressure in, I push her away, I start to swim underneath. I get to here, she stands straight up. I bring her down, I come up, insert the right knee, seat belt, and I start to attack. So, like with anything in Nogi, it's more slippery and there's a lot of contact. Let me show you guys some of the other options that you might have. So, we're here, she's pressuring in, I'm pushing her away, I'm able to get underneath her, I come into this position. Look guys, I can start to swim for this leg, and I can start to attack her leg here. Go back up, right? I can start to fish for the uh, X guard, and it's kind of a reverse X, and I say reverse X because her foot is on the right side of my body as opposed to the left. And from the reverse X, as I extend her, I can start to look for the knee bar. I can start to move her leg inside for the heel hook. There's a bunch of different things. So you have a lot of options, but the first thing you need to be able to do is invert underneath your opponent. So one last tip to being able to invert. When you invert, just squat, and let's turn this way. When you invert, all you're doing is your grip has to be this. It has to be palm up, okay? You're on, the bicep is on, the, on her shin. And now look, forget, I don't even need my hook to invert, guys. All I have to do is do a hip escape, one. Now I'm really underneath her. Now look, my left hand is gonna do all of the work. If she was crowding me, it would be under her armpit, okay? If she wasn't crowding me, it would be under her leg, palm up as well. I'm gonna pull her leg to me, guys. I'm not going to her, she's coming to me. Look, watch what I do, I pull her to me. You see, I have this really nice grip. Now my shin comes behind and I hug. She can't move anywhere, try to run away. She can't run anywhere, guys. There's nothing she can do right now. Now I pummel this leg in. If I need space to pummel this leg in, I push her forward and then I pummel. That's, that's the fundamentals of the movement. So that's what you have to be comfortable doing. And again, if she was crowding me, so start to crowd me a little, my foot's gonna help. And now look, my left hand is on her armpit. And I use her armpit to bring her to me. See this extension? Now I switch to the leg. Armpit, leg, same movement. I have that inside tie with my elbow. Now look, I push her forward a little, pummel the other leg in, and now I can start all of my attacks. So again, remember, their posture straight up and disengaging, you would switch to the De La Hiva, you would work sit-up attacks. But that's a good starting point for a roadmap for the reverse De La Hiva without the Gi. So I know it's a lot to digest, 
And I know it's not so much specified technique, it's more conceptual, but I think this way you guys are gonna be able to see the path and then do what works best for you. So as usual guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe. Thanks to my wife, Bruna. Hit the little notification bell if you haven't already and be notified when I make a new video. Oh, guys.